Let us continue to dream the impossible dream that now becomes real. Space is for everyone. We humans really are connected to the universe. The Earth's climate is changing. We have documented the changes. Starliner is headed back to space on the shoulders of Atlas. The Artemis generation stands ready, ready to return humanity to the moon and then to take us further than ever before to Mars. Hello, and welcome to the 2022 Administrators Agency Honor Award Ceremony. My name is Sharita Nash, and I am the Program and Policy Lead for the Awards and Recognition Program here at NASA. It is my pleasure to introduce the master of ceremony for today's celebration, Mr. Bill Marks. <laughs> Bill Marks is the deputy director of the Office of Center Operations at NASA Space Flight Center. Okay, at Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. He was appointed in this position following a brief period in the private sector and an almost 28-year career in the U.S. Army. That's another round of applause there for that. <laughs> While serving in the U.S. Army, Mark served in numerous leadership roles, including two tours in Iraq and he retired as a colonel in 2016 after serving as the Redstone Arsenal Garrison Commander. Some of Mark's military awards include the Legion of Merit, two Bronze Star Medals, the Defense Meritorious Service Medal, and the Ranger Tab. Please help me in welcoming Mr. Bill Marks. Well, thank you, Sharita. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, and wow, um, what a great day it is to be at Marshall Space Flight Center. To be honest, every day is. Uh, it's great to be at the best installation on the planet. I hope everybody feels the same about their installation. We certainly do here. Um, uh, if you work here and you're figuring it out, if you're visiting here, and I'm sure if you're out there wondering what I'm talking about, you need to come make a plan to join us here at Marshall Space Flight Center. Um, we welcome you and to those who did make the journey here, and we appreciate the effort for sure. Um, and we welcome you to this year's Agency Honor Award Ceremony where we come together uh, to recognize these individuals from across the agency awarded NASA's highest honors. We will hear about many contributions from these most distinguished honorees and their programs. But before we begin, we ask those of you that are able to please rise for the presentation of colors by the Columbia High School Junior ROTC and the performance of the National Anthem by Miss Renata America. say can you see by the dawn's early light what 
what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the I mean, wow. That, that gets me every time I hear it, and I've heard Renata do that several times, and she gets it a little bit better every time, and I'll tell you what, that is, that is very moving uh, to me. Uh, just a little shout out to the uh, Columbia High School JRTC. Um, that was performed um, exceptionally well, perfect, if you will. Uh, and should be no surprise because they are uh, the uh, best unit in the Veterans Day Parade here locally, uh, two years running. So thank you for that and please be seated. So at this time, I would like to invite our host, who is an acknowledged giant in aerospace engineering and our director of Marshall Space Flight Center, Ms. Jody Singer. Good morning and, and welcome uh, to the 2022 Administrators Agency Honor Award Ceremony. And I want to pause just one second too and say, Bill, thank you so much for being such a lovely MC, uh, helping us today. Uh, appreciate your, your doing this and just really want to say so much for giving uh, Marshall Space Flight Center the opportunity uh, to host this event. And, and again, wow, to the Color Guard and to um, Rita, wow, what a beautiful way to start the day. Um, I am truly, like I said, delighted to welcome all of you to Marshall Space Flight Center here in uh, lovely Huntsville, Alabama. And I'm glad the weather and everything has held out too. For those of you that uh, saw it on the way in, it, we're also known as the Rocket City. And it is our privilege, a true privilege, to host so many wonderful award recipients from across the agency. Whether it's your first time visiting our center or if you are a part of our daily workforce, I hope you will find some time to take advantage of being here to tour Marshall's facilities and to get to know our incredible team members. Marshall Space Flight Center is known for our rich legacy in propulsion, in space transportation, space systems, and science. Um, last year, as a matter of fact, uh, Forbes uh, named us the top place to work in the state of Alabama, so I'm very proud of that. <laughs> We're also home to nearly 7,000 scientists, engineers, technicians, and support personnel that work in more than 125 unique and specialized facilities and laboratories here at Marshall Space Flight Center. 
And I'm proud to say we have the highest percentage of female leaders out of NASA Center at 40%. So that's another achievement that we're very, very proud of. Marshall provides the diversity of capabilities for NASA missions, industry cap collaborations, international partnerships, and support for other government agencies. You know, from a lot of our key areas that we work, from the space launch system to the human landing system, habitation systems, earth science, STEM, outreach, our portfolio is extensive and continually expanding and growing, and I'll tell you, it is a new way of doing change at Marshall Space Flight Center that I'm very proud of. I'm also very honored to lead Marshall's talented and dedicated workforce. You, the workforce, are our true talent. And I also want to say thank you to all the family members and friends for your support. We truly could not do any of this without you and the support that you give our folks. And most importantly, thanks to all of you for being here to help us celebrate our incredible awards and our recipients from all across NASA. It is truly an honor to know and be able to work with many of you and know you over my years. Uh, it is a fantastic when I see all the talent, um, all what you have given and all the sacrifices that you make each and every day. It is now my honor to introduce our next speaker. Casey Swells is NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator. In this role, she leads mission support functions across the agency. She builds and advances industry partnerships and oversees day-to-day -day operations and NASA's long-term strategic direction. Please help me in welcoming Casey to the stage. Thank you. All right, good afternoon or morning, depending on where you are. Uh, I have to say there's a reason no one asked me to sing the national anthem. So uh, just kudos again, because that was amazing. I think I still have chills from that. I also have to say, this is a really good looking room. We all clean up quite nice in here. Uh, so, but really, it is, it's an absolute pleasure to be here at the Marshall Space Flight Center. Uh, this is, I think, probably my third time since I've been here since the pandemic, so it's really good to see people in person and see folks that I haven't seen in a while, even some that have left the agency. Uh, and it is really an honor to be here today to celebrate our exceptional employees and all the facets of the work that they do across all of our NASA centers. Um, it really is just a true privilege privilege because of all the accomplishments, particularly over the last couple years and this last year alone. Uh, the world often sees the public-facing accomplishments of our NASA workforce with our launches, our missions, our scientific endeavors, uh, but these honor awards really give us the opportunity to recognize the work that you all do as individuals, uh, contributing to NASA's success in accomplishing all of our missions. So without the people in this room and the virtual room, the folks online, uh, we would not be able to understand the planets, to see and explore the wonders of space, and uh, launch humans into the heavens. So uh, thank you. It is truly amazing the extraordinary, groundbreaking, and exceptional things and accomplished by those in this very room. I will say it's also because of you that we were named recently the best place to work in the federal government for the 11th year in a row. And just think about that for a minute, 11 years running. I mean, that is really incredible when you look at all the agencies across the federal government uh, that our agency for 11 years running uh, has the most talented, the strongest workforce out there. And so a, a, big, a big thank you again to you all. So, and I'm hoping for number 12. I was, I'll tell you, I was at the, uh, the best places to work breakfast and there's a lot of people gunning for us. So hoping for number 12. Uh, but, the, but at this ceremony today, we'll present the highest recognition that NASA bestows on our workforce, the Distinguished Service Medal and the Distinguished Public Service Medal. The Distinguished Service Medal is for civil servants, and it's awarded to any government employee who, by distinguished service, ability, or vision, has personally contributed to NASA's advancement of the United States' interest. And the Distinguished Public Service Medal is for 
contractors or NASA affiliates, and it's awarded to individuals whose also distinguished service, ability, or vision has personally contributed to NASA's advancement of the United States interest. So for both of these medals, individual achievement or contribution must demonstrate a level of excellence that has made a profound or indelible impact to NASA's mission success. Therefore, the contribution is so extraordinary that it exceeds any other form of recognition at the agency. Uh, so congratulations to all of our honorees. You should be extremely proud. Uh, it's so great to see families in the room as well. Our hope is that seeing these distinguished contributions from the past year will motivate the entire workforce to continue doing the amazing work that you all do. And now an address from NASA's administrator, Bill Nelson. Welcome to the Administrators Honor Awards. Each year we celebrate NASA's unending quest to discover the unknown and to inspire humanity. We celebrate the people that make it all possible. And last year was one for the history books, Artemis, Dart, James Webb, and so much more. NASA makes the impossible possible. So tonight, NASA will present the Distinguished Service Medal and Distinguished Public Service Medal honorees, NASA's highest form of recognition. These awards honor individuals who are leading the charge in NASA's groundbreaking discoveries that will shape this new era of exploration. So congratulations to all of our honorees. All right, now let's get to recognizing our honorees. Let's see, we'll start with Armstrong Flight Research Center. Hi, I'm Brad Flick, Center Director of the Armstrong Flight Research Center. Congratulations to all the awardees. You truly represent the best of NASA, and it makes us all proud to be part of this very special agency. So congratulations again. Armstrong Flight Research Center's honoree uh, present today is Mr. David McBride. It's truly my honor to recognize my colleague, my predecessor as center director, and most importantly, my dear old friend David McBride with NASA's highest honor, the Distinguished Service Medal. From his time as a co-op student to the flight systems lead on the iconic X-29 and X-31 flight projects, to his management and leadership jobs that culminated with his 12 year stint as our center director, David devoted his career to excellence and dedicated service to NASA and the nation. Congratulations, David, on this great honor. David McBride is being recognized for distinguished service contributing technical experience, management, and leadership to NASA's mission. Now let's go to Goddard Space Flight Center. Hi, I'm Dr. Mackenzie Listrup, Director of the Goddard Space Flight Center. It is a pleasure and an honor for me to introduce the six members of our Goddard team whose distinguished service we are going to recognize today. Their nominations are filled with decades of examples of innovation, leadership, and support to many of NASA's most successful projects, including the Hubble Space Telescope, the International Space Station, planetary and space probes, and of course, the James Webb Space Telescope. Their breadth of experience also echoes some of the many varied missions we have at Goddard. They include astrophysics, heliophysics, cryogenics, engineering, as well as leadership and mentoring. Please join me in recognizing George, Maria, Alan, Nicholas, Sandra, and Dennis for their many years of service, hard work, dedication, sacrifices, and successes in service of our agency and its many missions. 
Goddard Space Flight Center's first honoree present today is Mr. Nicholas Crisotomos. Nick Crisotomos is extremely deserving of this honor, having contributed to more than 50 NASA missions throughout his 50 years of service to the federal government, including, but not limited to, Earth System Science Pathfinder, TDRS, GOLD, TESS, ICSPE, and Solar Orbiter. He demonstrates exceptional leadership of NASA spaceflight missions and has contributed to the formation of several NASA program offices, such as the Sun-Earth Connections, Earth System Science Pathfinder, and Explorers and Heliophysics Division at Goddard. Nick also shares his wide-reaching knowledge as a devoted mentor and frequent chair and member of prominent NASA standing review boards to include, but not limited to, Roman, Sentinel-6, and Grace follow-on. In his current roles as the program manager for three NASA headquarters programs and as an associate division director at Goddard, he has led over two dozen successful launches and presently supports more than 20 projects in development. And to highlight a few, there are GDC, CRISM, Tracers, and Glide. We are immensely grateful for Nick's distinguished service and dedication. Mr. Nicholas Crisotomos is being recognized for exceptional leadership across several NASA programs with vital contributions to NASA and the nation, enabling more than 50 NASA missions across all SMD science areas. Goddard Space Flight Center's next honoree is Miss Sandra Irish. Sandra Irish's NASA career has been one of dedication and service. As a lead structural analyst, she has been critical to the success of multiple NASA missions, including, most recently, the James Webb Space Telescope. In addition to her engineering excellence, Sandra has been an effective and compassionate leader in many other areas. She's a mentor, a champion of diversity and inclusion, a passionate advocate for STEM education, and an outstanding ambassador for NASA through her many outreach efforts. Sandra is a role model for her colleagues and inspiration for the next generation of NASA engineers, and I am delighted to see her recognized with the Distinguished Service Medal. Ms. Sandra Irish is being recognized for exceptional, dedicated, and sustained service to NASA through excellence in engineering, outreach, mentoring, and support of a diverse and inclusive workforce. Goddard Space Flight Center's next honoree is Dr. George Rieke. We nominated Professor George Rieke for this award for recognition of decades of brilliant leadership in space astronomy. He acted as the U.S. Principal Investigator for the MIRI, the Mid-Infrared Instrument on the James Webb Space Telescope. In this role, he developed a transatlantic partnership with the European team that built much of the instrument, and he made sure that the U.S. made detectors met all their requirements. This instrument has already produced stunning images of clouds where stars are being born today. Before his work on Webb, Professor Rieke also led the development of the MIPS instrument on the Spitzer Space Telescope. For all these accomplishments, we are proud that Dr. Rieke is receiving this award. Dr. George Rieke is being recognized for distinguished service to NASA for the James Webb and Spitzer Space Telescopes. Goddard Space Flight Center's next honoree is Dr. Marsha Rieke. We nominated Professor Marsha Rieke in recognition of a lifetime of service and brilliant leadership in space astronomy. She was Deputy Principal Investigator for the NICMAS instrument on the Hubble Space Telescope, a co-investigator on the MIPS instrument on the Spitzer Space Telescope, 
and for two decades she was the principal investigator for the NIRCAM instrument on the James Webb Space Telescope. This instrument is already revealing some of the first galaxies that grew after the Big Bang, key observations that were a primary reason for building the web. We are delighted that she is receiving this award. Dr. Marsha Rieke is being recognized for distinguished service to NASA for the James Webb, Spitzer, and Hubble Space Telescopes. equally impressed with that. A little, up, little games in the ship. So Goddard Space Flight Center's final honoree present today is Dr. Alan Sherman. During his 50 plus year career, Dr. Alan Sherman has had a front row seat to most of NASA's major accomplishments and has mentored at least three generations of NASA engineers. And I consider myself extremely fortunate to be one of them. Al and I have worked together on the James Webb Space Telescope for over 20 years now. When I became the NASA Mission Systems Engineer for Webb, one of the first things I did was hire Al to lead our engineering review board. As the lead, Al was deeply involved in all aspects of the observatory development and the solutions to some of the project's most complex technical problems. These include the definition of the cryogenic architecture of the observatory, the accommodation of the Miri cryocooler, various issues with the propulsion system, and issues with the way the many soft structure membranes respond to the rapid depressurization during launch and ascent. Al Sherman's leadership and sage wisdom has been an invaluable asset to all on the James Webb project and was clearly a key factor in its success. I can think of no one more worthy of the Distinguished Service Medal than Al. Dr. Alan Sherman is being recognized for more than 50 years of distinguished service to expand NASA's unprecedented science and technology ambitions for the benefit of humankind. Let's go out to the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Hi, I'm JPL Director Lori Leshen. It is a privilege to recognize the incredible accomplishments of our distinguished colleagues across the agency who are being awarded NASA's highest honor. What an achievement. I believe there is truly no better place to be on the planet, or off for that matter, for those who are driven by curiosity and purpose. To all of the individuals being recognized today, thank you for allowing your curiosity to help us push the boundaries of space exploration for the benefit of humanity. Your immense contributions will have a lasting impact on NASA, our nation, and beyond. I am especially thrilled to celebrate my JPL colleagues who are being honored today. Congratulations on this recognition of your outstanding work. Our motto at JPL is to dare mighty things together, and you truly embody this. You are driving the forefront of scientific discovery and inspiring us all to continue pushing the boundaries of possibility together. Congratulations again to each and every honoree. Jet Propulsion Laboratory's first honoree today is Dr. Leslie Deutsch. I'm so excited to be with you today to introduce Dr. Leslie Deutsch from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Dr. Deutsch is an exceptional space communication expert and technologist, and he's been involved primarily at JPL with the Deep Space Network. Les has been involved with enabling science data from the moon all the way out to interstellar space where the Voyager spacecraft are traveling today. Les, congratulations on this award. It is well deserved. 
Dr. Leslie Deutsch is being recognized for distinguished service and leadership in developing and deploying communications technologies that have transformed NASA's planetary exploration. Jet Propulsion Laboratory's final honoree is Dr. Darius Div Salar. Dr. Darius Div Salar is a world renowned researcher in the field of telecommunications. His inventions of communications technology, particularly error correcting codes, have led to a vast increase in the volume of science data returned reliably from a broad spectrum of space missions. Dr. Div Salar is the principal intellectual force behind the development of both turbo and low density parity check codes, which are in widespread use by both NASA and non-NASA missions. His work has profoundly impacted the course of NASA's planetary exploration. I congratulate Darius Divsalar on this great award. Dr. Darius Divsalar is being recognized for distinguished service and for breakthroughs in communications theory and in deep space communications coding, transforming NASA's capabilities in solar system exploration. Now let's head out to Johnson Space, space Center. Hello, I'm Vanessa White, the director of NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. It is a great honor for me to welcome all of you watching and to introduce JSC's 2022 Distinguished Service and Distinguished Public Service Medal winners. I extend my personal congratulations to each of them and am proud of their indelible service and achievement. The work they performed has made a significant impact to the aerospace industry, to NASA, and to the nation. And we are grateful for their tremendous efforts. At JSC, we dare to expand frontiers, we unite with our partners to complete bold missions, and we explore space to benefit humanity. Those being awarded medals today embody this vision. Because of them, I'm very excited about the future of human spaceflight and exploration. A special thank you to all the families and friends of our honorees who are with us today to celebrate a record year for NASA. Without your support, many of our awardees would not have achieved so much. Now, let's begin honoring these distinguished individuals from Johnson Space Center. Johnson Space Center's first honoree present today is Mr. John Mark Childress. For 40 years, Mark Childress has been a critical part of NASA's safety culture and process, protecting our crews and vehicles. He was key to establishing the ISS operations safety process, participated in numerous incident investigation teams, and chaired the Spacecraft Technical Review Board. However, his greatest achievement is the team and culture he created in the Flight Operations Safety Office that will carry on his legacy of excellence and being ever vigilant. Congratulations, Mark. Mr. Mark Childress is being recognized for exceptional expertise and leadership in flight operations safety. Johnson Space Center's next honoree is Ms. Lori Costello. Hi, I'm Nicole Jordan, manager of NASA's Commercial Crew Program Spacecraft Office, and it is my honor to be here today congratulating Lori Costello of SpaceX on her Distinguished Public Service Medal. Lori's management of Crew Dragon production enabled more than two years of crew presence aboard the ISS. Lori was responsible for ensuring every aspect of that spacecraft was ready and safe for flight. Lori's outstanding service in the integration, issue resolution, and leadership at SpaceX helped protect the lives of 22 astronauts over six missions. 
Thank you, Lori, and congratulations. Ms. Lori Costello is being recognized for outstanding service in the integration, issue resolution, and leadership as the SpaceX Crew Dragon product manager in support of the Commercial Crew Program. Johnson Space Center's next honoree is Mr. Charles Dingle. In a NASA career that has spanned almost 40 years, Chuck Dingle started in flight operations as a trainer and then flight controller. He later joined engineering to support the X-38 project as a systems lead and then a chief engineer. From there, he joined a fledgling project called CEV, or the Crew Exploration Vehicle, which over time would become the Orion program as we know it today. An engineer's engineer, whether designing novel heat rejection sublimator or discussing the intricacies of spacecraft propulsion systems, Chuck has spent the last two decades with the singular focus of fielding the next exploration spacecraft. Whether contract development, architecture, analysis of alternatives, onboarding a prime contractor and an international partner, rigorous interrogation of the safety and robustness of the spacecraft systems, and real world problem solving through development. All of these leading to recommendations and implementation directly resulting in a safer, more capable spacecraft for our NASA exploration program. But underpinning and through all of that, Chuck has developed the next generation of NASA spacecraft systems experts, leading and teaching through example how to make actionable, practical recommendations for safe systems design that are conscious of program milestones and cost constraints. Through his efforts and throughout his career, Chuck has personally made many contributions representing substantial progress to the NASA mission, as most visibly embodied in the recent success of the Artemis I exploration mission. This contribution will pay dividends for generations to come, not only through our exploration capability, but through the engineers he has developed and guided along the way. It is known by many that leadership is an action, not a position. Mr. Dingle has led the Orion engineering team through action from inception of the program through execution of several successful flight tests. For this, we are thankful for his dedication and leadership and find him most worthy of NASA's highest honor in the Distinguished Service Medal. Thank you, Chuck, and congratulations. Mr. Charles Dingle is being recognized for a career of exceptional leadership and technical contributions to NASA's human spaceflight programs. Johnson Space Center's final honoree present today is Mr. Norman Knight. Norm Knight is the Director of Flight Operations at JSC and has over 30 years experience. Norm has served as a distinguished leader in flight operations, including as Deputy and Chief of NASA's Flight Directors. His impact on the NASA mission and human spaceflight is immeasurable emerging time and time again as a major innovative and exceptional leader that NASA calls on for essential and major mission needs. Norm has been at the forefront of American human spaceflight, overseeing the Mission Control Center, our astronauts flying to and from the International Space Station, and flight operations readiness for emerging spaceflight programs and developments such as commercial crew, Orion, Gateway, the Human Landing System, and Lunar Surface. Congratulations, Norm. Mr. Norman Knight is being recognized for distinguished service to NASA Human Space Flight leading the Flight Director's Office and Flight Operations Directorate.
Now let's go down to Kennedy Space Center. Hi, I'm Janet Petro, director of NASA's John F. Kennedy Space Center in Florida. As the world's premier multi-user spaceport, we at Kennedy want to take a moment and extend a hearty congratulations to the KSC honorees who are receiving the Distinguished Service Medal. I'm so very proud of you and the example that you have set for our center and the agency. The work you do is what allows us to provide continuous access to space from Earth's premier spaceport. Kennedy Space Center's first honoree present today is Mr. Omar Baez. Omar Baez is the launch director for a launch services program, and he has probably had something to do with just about every single NASA mission that has been launched over his career of about 32 years, from the shuttle program through the launch services program. Some of his favorites are the Mars missions that are now circling the planet or on the planet collecting samples. Um, Omar, from your friends here at LSP, we just want to say thank you for everything you've done and congratulations. Congratulations, Omar! Mr. Omar Baez is being recognized for sustained and superior leadership of cross-agency teams in successfully launching over 80 of NASA's most significant science and robotic missions. All right, Kennedy Space Center's next honoree today is Mr. Ernesto Camacho. In Kennedy Space Center, it is the infrastructure and facilities that enable space launch. With the completion of the space shuttle program and the start of exploration initiatives, NASA faced significant changes in human space flight, which led to the eventual transformation of the Kennedy Space Center to a multi-user spaceport. For this transformation to occur, the modifications to the aging shuttle infrastructures and facilities had to be accomplished to support our new Artemis program, as well as launching vehicles from our commercial partners. The center has only witnessed this magnitude of transformation once nearly 50 years ago from Apollo era to the space shuttle program. To achieve this major objective for the agency, Mr. Ernesto Ernie Camacho Serving as then the Construction of Facilities CFF Division Chief and later as a Senior Executive and Chief of the Technical Performance and Integration Division, led the planning, design, construction, activation, and completion of all major infrastructure projects directly responsible for transforming the center into a true multi-user spaceport, including enabling the processing and launch operations of the Artemis One mission. The challenge was to complete over $1 billion worth of projects under a very critical, critical schedule, nearly a decade. In facing numerous adversities, including a major pandemic that has shaped the nation, Ernie, through the completion of a very large CFF portfolio, has transformed the center, enabling KSC to achieve the nation's space exploration goals following the retirement of the space shuttle program and fulfill space explorations to the moon and beyond. His legacy and contribution to this major milestone for the agency will, will forever be regarded as one of the major catalysts of transformational changes for the center. It is for this that Mr. Ernie Camacho is most deserving of this Distinguished Service Medal. Congrats, Ernie. Mr. Ernesto Camacho is being recognized for distinguished service in transforming Kennedy Space Center into a true multi-user spaceport, enabling the nation's space exploration goals. Space Center's next honoree is Miss Maria Calura. Maria Calura was nominated for the Distinguished Service Medal because of her outstanding collaborative leadership and her ability to foster meaningful relationships with all of our spaceport customers as she provides critical support to KSC's commercial and government partners and every NASA KSC program with enthusiasm, expertise, 
and resilience. Her ability to target problems, negotiate solutions, manage change, and posture her organization for success throughout a period of considerable and sometimes difficult change has consistently enabled KSC to provide and fairly allocate the many resources our commercial partners rely on while maintaining the priority of NASA programs. Most notably, I'm impressed by Maria's tenacity and her relentless pursuit of solutions that are best for all stakeholders. Just one example of this is how she challenged the agency policies to enable new construction efforts for commercial partners, paving the way for groundbreaking legislation and allow the inclusion of partner requirements and contracts and to enable partner contributions for spaceport capability upgrades, maintenance, and operations. So thank you, Maria. Your impact, your work has a great impact on the agency and KSC far into the future. We at KSC are so very proud of you and look forward to all of your future accomplishments. Go Maria. Ms. Maria Kalura is being recognized for distinguished leadership and sustained commitment to Kennedy Space Center, the Office of Strategic Infrastructure, and NASA. Kennedy Space Center's final honoree present today is Miss Amanda Miskovich. Amanda Miskovich has served NASA with distinction for more than 36 years. She has led the Launch Services Program to consistently exceed expectations as they provide end-to-end -end launch services under multiple contracts with a robust manifest while overcoming numerous challenges from the COVID-19 pandemic and an extremely dynamic commercial space market. Beyond her contributions to LSP, Amanda has had a profound and lasting impact on NASA and KSC by providing advisory assistance to missions outside the normal LSP scope of work, collaborating to provide launch vehicle expertise to further increase mission assurance for other programs and missions as needed. Her relentless commitment to continuous improvement and emphasis on collaborative communication has served to strengthen commercial coalitions and cross-government partnerships, greatly enhancing NASA's role in the nation's commercial launch industry. Her exceptional vision and leadership make her extremely deserving of this Distinguished Service Medal. So proud of you, Amanda. Ms. Amanda Mishkovich is being recognized for leadership of numerous successful agency mission launch campaigns as well as the advisory support of key agency missions not launched by the Launch Services Program. Now let's go up to Langley Research Center. Hi, I'm Clayton Turner, director of NASA's Langley Research Center. Congratulations to all of Langley's honorees. To our recipients of the Distinguished Service and Distinguished Public Service Medals, I offer my heartfelt thanks for your dedication, energy, and vision. You've helped NASA create positive impact. You've allowed us to reach for new heights to reveal the unknown for the benefit of humankind. A little bit about Langley's storied past. It was founded in 1917, and it is the site of many firsts in aeronautics, space technology, science, and exploration. We continue to expand the boundaries of knowledge with innovation supporting NASA's mission areas. We shape the future in a variety of ways. We do this through our work on planetary entry, technologies for advanced air mobility, 
tools for autonomous construction on the moon and Mars, and sensor development to enable our future. A new era is dawning. Langley's advances help define the landscape of that bright future. We're incredibly grateful to be able to do this important work for the American people and for all humanity. People like today's honorees make it all possible. Now, let's move ahead with the recognition. And Langley Research Center's first honoree present today is Dr. David Glass. Hello, I'm Jill Prince, Deputy Director of the Research Director at NASA Langley Research Center. It is my honor to recognize and congratulate Dr. David Glass as a recipient of the Distinguished Service Medal. David is an internationally recognized expert in the field of thermal structures and materials for hypersonic vehicles and has dedicated the past 30 years to pushing the boundaries of hypersonic research. His continued leadership has been critical to the ongoing success of high temperature structures and material development within many projects such as the Hypersonic Technology Project of the Advanced Air Vehicles Program, Tactical Boost Glide Program, and other NASA and DARPA missions. David, thank you for your continued support and dedication to NASA and moving our mission forward. It's been an honor working with you over the years, and you are truly deserving of this award. Dr. David Glass is being recognized for exceptional impacts to the success of hypersonic vehicles development research efforts on the thermal structural and material aspects. Research Center's final honoree present today is Mr. James Mahan. Professor Mahan first became involved in NASA-sponsored Earth Radiation Budget Research in the summer of 1971 as an ASME NASA Faculty Fellow at NASA Langley Research Center. This provided a modest start to a monumental four-decade career of distinguished service and collaboration with NASA, resulting in continuous advancement in state-of-the-art remote sensing instrumentation and data interpretation protocols, alongside the development of the next generation of leadership for the international Earth Radiation Budget observational community. Professor Mahan's distinguished accomplishments and contributions with his tenet of understanding the world better one future leader and one future remote sensing instrument at a time has significantly advanced the state of knowledge of the climate system and thus the national interest. His proactive efforts to embrace diversity of thought and perspective in his research group by recruiting and advising students from a broad range of national, ethnic, and cultural backgrounds has similarly enriched the international community of researchers he has developed. His accomplishments and contributions to the community make him an outstanding recipient for Distinguished Public Service Medal. Dr. James Mahan is being recognized for Distinguished Public Service over four decades, supporting climate remote sensing missions to develop the world's leading fundamental climate data record of Earth radiation. bringing it on home to the best installation on the planet, which is Marshall Space Flight Center. Hi, I'm Jody Singer, the director of Marshall Space Flight Center. It is such a privilege to honor you today. All of you receiving the Distinguished Service Medal represent the best of Marshall's commitment to the NASA mission. It is always extra special when we can shine the spotlight on team members for their great work because our people are the most important part of what we do. And for all the family members and friends joining us today, I want you to know that you are so vital to our honorees' accomplishments. All the hard work we do is preparing Marshall and NASA for a spectacular future, putting the first woman and person of color on the moon and more. You, our people, 
are the heart and soul of Marshall Space Flight Center. Your work and dedication make it possible for Marshall to achieve all the agency's goals of exploration and discovery. Again, thank you for all you do and congratulations on receiving the Distinguished Service Medal. Marshall Space Flight Center's first honoree today is Mr. Richard Burke. Unfortunately, Mr. Burke is unable to be with us today, but we are thrilled to honor him. Congratulations to Mr. Rick Burke for his servant leadership and innovation at NASA throughout his 32-year career. He made significant contributions to NASA spaceflight programs, including the Space Shuttle Program, the Constellation Program, and the Space Launch System Program. In 2021, Rick was appointed as my Deputy Director, and I cannot say enough about his positive attitude, his attention to detail, and can-do spirit. Mr. Burt fosters and promotes collaborative and inclusive environments that support Marshall's diverse workforce, as well as mentors individuals and groups that align with organizational and agency initiatives. Mr. Burt has been a significant force in developing the partnerships across the federal government, and his distinguished service reflects great credit on himself, Marshall, the agency, and the nation, making him well-deserving of his prestigious award. Congratulations, Rick, on your retirement and your Distinguished Service Medal. Mr. Rick Burke is being recognized for distinguished service that has profoundly impacted the effectiveness of NASA and Marshall Space Flight Center, ensuring mission success for critical agency programs. Marshall Space Flight Center's next honoree is Ms. Karen Oliver. Ms. Karen Oliver has a long and distinguished career in the field of loads and dynamics at Marshall Space Flight Center and is recognized as an agency expert. She's an MSFC trailblazer, visionary leader, influencer, and positive role model in this area. And having worked over 35 years, she brought solid technical analysis and advice to design solutions. She's known as the go-to person for delivering component and payload low-frequency interface loads. She's also known as unflappable and would approach all items with patience and diligence, demonstrated most recently as she served as the sub-discipline lead engineer for the space launch system, vibroacoustics, and shock environments. Additionally, her expertise was solicited in the initial phases of programs to establish dynamic related requirements like the human landing system and the Mars Ascent Vehicle projects. She changed the discipline narrative from reporting environments to not only report values, but explain how the values were derived thoroughly explaining the methodologies and assumptions so that the community could understand how the requirements were established. A hidden figure in her own right. Congratulations, Karen. Ms. Karen Oliver is being recognized for distinguished and sustained contributions in technical innovation, leadership, and mentoring in the fields of launch vehicle and payload dynamics. Marshall Space Flight Center's final honoree uh, present today is Dr. Lisa Watson Morgan. I have had the privilege of knowing Dr. Lisa Watson Morgan throughout her 34 years at NASA. Her career with NASA has been characterized by remarkable achievements resulting in outstanding contributions to the nation's spaceflight, science, and exploration missions. She currently serves as program manager of the Human Landing System Program which is developing systems to land the first woman and first person of color on the moon's south pole, 
a significant milestone of national importance on an incredibly rapid schedule. Because the Artemis campaign, of which the key HLS is a key part, is extremely complex, her strong, calm, and supportive leadership makes her an outstanding role model for future leaders across the agency. She has developed and maintained excellent relationship with other Artemis campaign development programs and multiple HLS providers. Her work is not only beneficial for HLS, but it is also likely to be used as a model for future human exploration programs. Throughout her career, Lisa has been and continues to be an exceptional mentor to men and women across NASA as well as the private sector. Congratulations, Lisa, for receiving the Distinguished Service Medal. You have more than earned it. Dr. Lisa Watson Morgan is being recognized for distinguished service, technical excellence, leadership, and profound contributions to NASA's programs, including establishing the Artemis Human Landing System Program. NASA Headquarters and Mission Support Enterprise Organizations are next. Hi, I'm Casey Swales, Deputy Associate Administrator. We are thrilled to return to in-person recognition events, including the Administrator's Agency Honor Award Ceremony. Over the last three years, we have strengthened our commitment towards excellence and seen the fruits of our labor. Look at all that we've accomplished as a team. It is truly an honor to recognize you for your extraordinary contributions. It is what you bring to the table that allows for our mission to continue to be successful in achieving new heights. Each one of you inspire our next generation and accelerate our journey. So let's all take a moment to pause and to celebrate as we publicly recognize the accomplishments of our distinguished honorees. NASA Headquarters and Mission Support Enterprise Organization's first honoree present today is Mr. Jason Edge. I've had the pleasure of working with Mr. Jason Edge in the NASA Office of Procurement at Stennis Space Center for over 20 years. Mr. Edge continually demonstrates excellent leadership and professionalism. He provides daily insight and training to employees, ensuring the next generation of procurement professionals are well-trained and ready to support the agency. Jason is frequently contacted by other centers for advice. He stands ready to assist and is always willing to help and or provide needed work templates. Mr. Edge's accomplishments are without a doubt distinguished. Mr. Jason Edge is being recognized for distinguished service, outstanding leadership, and professionalism, serving in multiple positions in the NASA Office of Procurement in support of Stennis Space Center. NASA Headquarters and Mission Support Enterprise Organization's next honoree is Dr. Paul Hertz. Dr. Paul Hertz served as Astrophysics Director at NASA from 2012 to 2022. During this time, he led NASA's Astrophysics Division with about $1.7 billion annual spending for space missions, suborbital investigations, research and technology development focused on exploring our universe for the benefit of humanity. Perhaps his most impactful achievement of many is his trailblazing leadership for astrophysics programs. The science mission directorate and NASA in developing substantial responsive and executable programs that strengthen and integrate diverse communities. 
Polo's leadership, programmatic insight, knowledge, and exceptional efforts have ensured that the Astrophysics Program Division is not only recognized within the agency and the U.S. for its achievements, but referred to internationally as the leader in innovative science and applications to explore the universe. Dr. Paul Hertz is being recognized for leadership excellence, ingenuity, vision, and unwavering commitment, which have resulted in the advancement of NASA and the United States interests. NASA Headquarters and Mission Support Enterprise Organization's next honoree is Ms. Lauren Johnson. Lauren Johnson is a leader within the Office of Procurement. She is deserving of the Distinguished Service Medal for her many significant contributions during her 17-year career at NASA. Most notably, she stood up and now leads the new procurement office that supports the planetary exploration programs here at the Johnson Space Center. Those programs include the Gateway Program, the EVA and Human Surface Mobility Program, and the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Program. Thank you, Lauren. Ms. Lauren Johnson is being recognized for exceptional acquisition leadership that is advancing NASA's exploration mission to the lunar surface and beyond. NASA Headquarters and Mission Support Enterprise Organization's final honoree present today is Mr. Gregory Robinson. Greg Robinson was the James Webb Space Telescope Program Director, accountable for mission success of the world's largest, mo most powerful space telescope. In 2018, he led the Webb Telescope through a major rebaseline, ensuring cost, risk, schedule, and technical scope were aligned and realistic, thus placing the program on a successful path towards launch. Most notably, Greg resolved and closed all 32 independent review board recommendations. This was a major undertaking that improved the execution of current and future flagship missions. Greg's dedicated leadership of the James Webb Space Telescope program through the testing transport launch an in-flight calibration facilitated the accomplishment of many firsts in human history and exemplified the best of what NASA has to offer in a new era of space exploration and astronomy. Mr. Gregory Robinson is being recognized for exceptional service to NASA on the James Webb Telescope Program and Science Mission Directorate Program Management. like to now honor those honorees that are not able to be with us in person today. I'm excited and honored today to celebrate the Distinguished Service Medal Award for X-Rayer. Ed is an amazing engineer who has contributed to the success of so many NASA missions from the Space Shuttle Return to Flight, to Mars Science Laboratory, to Orion Crew Capsule, just to name a few. 
He is best known as the co-inventor of the photogrammetric measurement technique, which uses the high-resolution digital camera to measure, in real time, the surface recession of thermal protection materials tested in the NASA ArcJet facility. This measurement was so critical in the development of the ablative heat shield for the Mars entry and the Artemis mission. Another invention uses photogrammetry to track the movement of parachutes that were tested in the NFAP. Ed's career of 48 years at NASA and his work span from supporting aeronautics to human spaceflight and to Mars exploration. His contribution have been extraordinary and highly regarded in the aeroscience community and this distinguished service medal is so well deserved. Dennis Andrusik recently retired as center director of Goddard Space Flight Center, where he was responsible for managing an annual budget of over $4 billion and direction of over 10,000 civil servants and support service contractors. Over his multifaceted career, he led the development of guidance, navigation, and control activities and served as both the deputy and director of the Engineering and Technology Directorate. He was then selected to serve as NASA's Acting Chief Technologist and Deputy Associate Administrator for the agency's Space Technology Mission Directorate. Before returning to Goddard as its Center Director, Dennis was the Deputy Associate Administrator for NASA's Science Mission Directorate, overseeing the agency's $5 billion science program. Dennis is a passionate, dedicated, and committed leader focused on achieving the agency's mission, and he had a direct impact on several of NASA's most ambitious missions, such as the James Webb Space Telescope, the OSIRIS-REx mission, the launch of Landsat 9 spacecraft, the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, and multiple cargo missions to the International Space Station from the Wallops Flight Facility. Throughout his impressive 36 years of outstanding federal service, Dennis has proven to be one of the most remarkable leaders of NASA. His organization and leadership experience has enhanced NASA's ability to build successful new missions, and his dedicated service over three and a half decades demonstrate why he is highly deserving of the Distinguished Service Medal. Dr. David Crisp served as a research scientist in the Jet Propulsion Lab for 36 years. Few have done as much for NASA, especially in its Earth Science Department, and the global international community as David. His work ranges across key NASA missions in history, including Voyager, the Hubble Space Telescope, and most significantly, a series of satellite instruments called the Orbiting Carbon Observatory known as OCO. His cutting edge work with the OCO missions is especially important in the broader current context that address climate and global change in which both greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide distributions are the subject of various active international negotiations. The need for rigorous, well-calibrated, and widely accepted data on global CO2 distributions has never been greater, and Dr. Crisp's respected leadership and advocacy in this area was central not only to NASA's activities, but to the whole global effort. It's my honor to have nominated Dr. Eric M. Jones for NASA's Distinguished Public Service Medal. Eric is the creator of the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal, a vast online archive that documents and analyzes the actions and experiences of the Apollo moonwalkers in unsurpassed detail. Readily available to the public, the journal is a superb record of humanity's first expeditions to another world and the lessons Apollo has to offer for future explorations. Congratulations, Eric.
Humberson has served for over 40 years at NASA and has spent the past 10 years as the leader of the Science Mission Directorate's Science Exhibits and Events Group. In her role, she led a team of 20 people to organize 30 to 4, 35 meetings and events every year for scientific professional societies across the globe. These meetings reached thousands of people because of Vinnie and her team and have ensured that information and events are widely disseminated, accessible, eco-friendly and, and inclusive for all. Vinnie worked with agencies such as the Department of State and organizations including the annual conference for the parties of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate. Her leadership efforts have worldwide impacts still and Vinnie has been directly responsible for how NASA science is embraced and perceived. Hello, I am privileged to speak on behalf of my colleague, Jay Hen, and why Jay is more than deserving of the NASA Distinguished Service Medal. This award is testimony to Jay's exemplary performance and high impact results throughout his career. Jay has executed complex initiatives by strategically balancing the needs of NASA, its people, and its customers, while being a steward for innovation and agility. His most recent leadership of headquarters operation transformation resulted in a more integrated, more functional office to the benefit of NASA and all of its missions. Jay, a sincere thank you for your dedication and congratulations on this achievement. Hey everybody, I'm proud to award the Distinguished Public Service Medal to United States Senator Barbara Mikulski of Maryland. This honor is awarded to individuals who greatly contributed to NASA, to our mission success. Senator Mikulski certainly is the one that deserves this award. Hey Barbara, You've been a true champion for NASA and all of our space programs. During your 30 years in the Senate, you served on appropriations, you've served in commerce, and therefore the Space Subcommittee, and you've been the full chairman of the full appropriations committee. Barbara, you advocated for new NASA projects you were the driving force in securing funding for the first mission for the Hubble Space Telescope. And then two decades later, you fought relentlessly for the full funding of the James Webb Space Telescope. When it was dead and on life support, you resuscitated it. And it is now capturing the stunning images in the far reaches of the universe. So for NASA, I wanna thank Senator Barbara Mikulski for your support of our space exploration, our science, and our commitment to public service. Congratulations, Barbara. As co-founder of NanoRx, Jeff Mamber was literally the leader in the commercial use of ISS and has been followed by more than 10 companies so far. Additionally, he spent time teaching us NASA folks about business, explaining what I'm sure he thought were basic questions about sources of financing, finding customers, and the meaning of failure from his point of view. We needed to understand these things in order to move forward with enabling commercial use of low Earth orbit and Jeff has truly been a pioneer and a partner in these efforts. Bernardo, congratulations on your award and thank you for everything you've done for human spaceflight. 
Your contributions to the International Space Station have directly contributed to many of the successes we've had on board the International Space Station. But your contributions have gone much higher than the International Space Station. And with that, let me hand it over to Dan and then Howard. Bernardo, no single individual across the globe over the last 25 years have done more to help our international partnership along and keep it strong as we see it on the ISS today and the gateway in the future. Thank you very much for all the years of mentoring and guidance as we journey uh, our return back to the moon together. Congratulations, Bernardo. On behalf of the Orion program, thank you for your outstanding leadership and partnership in helping us build the European Service Module. Your efforts and dedication has made it successful for us to be partnered together with ESA and NASA to this journey to the moon. Thank you again for all you have done for human spaceflight. We look forward to many successful missions going forward on Artemis. Congratulations, Congratulations Bernardo. Bernardo. Dr. Barta has had a significant impact towards NASA's mission through his 30 plus years of service towards life support systems. His work can be seen on the International Space Station as well as the technologies being implemented for Gateway, the Lunar Surface, and Mars Transit. His impact can also be seen across academia and small, small business, of which continue to contribute towards NASA's mission for space exploration. Howard Hughes' indelible and profound impact on the NASA mission was manifested on December 11th, 2022, when the Orion spacecraft successfully completed the Artemis I test mission. With his 30-year career, half of it working in the Orion program, including serving as the deputy and presently as Orion's program manager. Howard's focus has been the success of Artemis. Howard achieved exceptional cost savings, international and industry integration and partnership, and outstanding innovation to Orion's systems. Congratulations, Howard. Julie Kramer White has worked 35 years making profound impacts to the NASA mission. Early in her career, she was responsible for ensuring the structural integrity of the space shuttles. From 2006 to 2017, Julie served as the chief engineer for the Orion spacecraft, guiding the technical team in the development of the first human-rated deep space exploration vehicle since Apollo. She oversaw the completion of the 15-year XEMU project, which created a new spacesuit for the first time since the 45-year-old shuttle design. And currently, she serves as Director of Engineering, JSC's largest organization. In this role, she championed and successfully executed the game-changing big idea across all 10 centers five mission directorates, and multiple mission support organizations, allowing NASA to invite the global community to collaborate and invest on its exploration objectives. Congratulations, Julie. Mike Bolger is a visionary leader who has always gone above and beyond to strategically align the Exploration Ground Systems Program with agency goals for human exploration. By establishing effective processes, coordinating multi-tier teams of ground and flight engineers, and cultivating strong relationships with leadership across the Exploration Systems Division, the SLS and Orion Program, prime contractors, the Navy, the Air, and the Air Force, Mike ensured that the EGS program and the KSC team were well positioned to support the Artemis I launch. All of this while initiating reforms that will save the program millions of dollars. But most importantly, 
Mike is a devoted leader who prioritizes the workforce above all else. As a leader of a multi-directorate, multi-contract team of approximately 500 civil servants and 3,000 contractors, he has always been fiercely committed to an environment of diversity and inclusion where employees feel welcome, respected, and connected. Although he recently retired after more than 37 years of service to the agency, Mike's extreme dedication to federal service and outstanding leadership of a very complex organization responsible for challenging mission deliverables make him very deserving of this Distinguished Service Medal. Mike, I'm so proud of you and what you have accomplished in your career here at NASA. Thank you. Mary to Joseph has a long history of distinguished public service, which has made a profound impact on NASA missions spanning science and aeronautics. As program manager for Living with the Star, she helps us further our understanding of the interconnected Earth-Sun system. As the director of aeronautics research at NASA Langley, Mary helped us successfully advance the aeronautics mission from early stage innovation to the next generation of X-Planes. Mary's career of distinguished public service has provided a profound and indelible impact in delivering significantly improved project and program performance, groundbreaking science, and advanced aeronautics research programs. Mary is very deserving of this superior recognition. Dr. Thomason is an internationally recognized authority on space-based stratospheric aerosol measurements. He developed a state-of-the-art stratospheric aerosol climatology that has become the community standard used in climate and ozone assessments. His service and leadership extend beyond NASA to the international community, where he coordinated cutting-edge research activities examining atmospheric processes interacting with climate change. He co-chaired several activities assessing stratospheric aerosol properties. Each soon became a book of reference cited in virtually every paper addressing any aspect of stratospheric aerosol. Nurturing early career researchers has been a prominent theme. He would often take himself back and rather give early career scientists the space and the visibility to grow and become great, inspiring leaders as Larry Thomason has been for so many years. This figure exemplifies Larry's devotion to scientific accuracy and the proclivity of having fun in the process. Congratulations, Larry, on a distinguished career. Now to conclude today's <clears throat> administrations, or now to conclude today's uh, Administrators Agency Honor Awards Program uh, ceremony, some final words from NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. To the members of the NASA family we honor today, your talents help NASA dare to continue onward and upward. The example of each honoree is larger than any individual alone. Together, the honorees that we celebrate will help NASA lead us further into space than ever before, inspiring the next generation, the Artemis generation, a generation of explorers with all kinds of new successes. On behalf of the entire NASA family, congratulations on this distinguished honor. Thank you for your service to NASA and to our country.